following is a paid political announcement. This November, down ballot victories are more important than in any past election. Presenting the Get Out and Vote Republican campaign. The purpose is to reach local conservative and Republican voters, to drive them to vote, and to vote down ballot on party lines. Get out and vote in this crucial election year. Vote down ballot on party lines. Get out and vote Republican. I'm Mike LaPetri, Republican candidate for Congress for New York District 3, and I approve this message. Paid for by LaPetri for Congress. Well, it's three days to the election, Sunday morning. Where the heck is our uh, world going to with us today to give us the European perspective? We have Mario Economo. He's a former banker who worked in New York, London, and Zurich for large money center banks. Uh, and But he was raised in Europe and the Middle East. And it was educated in the United States. Mario, give us an update. What do Europeans think of what's going to happen in the next three days? Yes, yeah, so good morning, uh, Mr. Katsimatidis. Um, so the Europeans, just like everyone else on the planet, is looking at what the outcome will eventually be at the U.S. Uh, for the U.S. presidential election. And I think a lot of Europeans are uh, very concerned about a potential win by former President Trump. Um, This, of course, would create all kinds of headwinds for Europe, not only from a national defense perspective, but also the uh, possibility of tariffs that President Trump may impose on various European uh, goods and services. So uh, I think what the Europeans are hoping for, at least this is the governments of Europe, uh, is a win by uh, Vice President Harris. I'm not sure they're prepared for a President uh, Trump win. It scares them. But I think there's a much deeper problem the European governments will face, and that is specifically that if President Trump does actually become the president again, um, uh, the European population will uh, be very unhappy with the European governments that will essentially have to admit defeat in the Ukraine, because President Trump has told us he's going to settle this war and he will do so quickly. Uh, we all know that this most likely means that President Trump will no longer continue to support the war effort in the Ukraine, and this will create a big problem in Europe for the European governments that have thrown a lot of money and a lot of weapons uh, systems into the Ukraine uh, fight, because those governments will now have to answer to the people why so much money was put into something that essentially has lo- has been lost. Uh, in fact, it's been lost for a while now, but nobody wants to admit it. So I think that's going to be the real problem the European governments are going to have to face, notwithstanding, of course, the fact that they're going to have to scramble and figure out how they're going to provide for their own uh, defense. And how do they feel with uh, what's going on uh, uh, with the conflicts of uh, Israel and the conflicts of Iran and what's going on in the Red Sea? The Red Sea... Is, is closed. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy to, to, to allow a, a terrorist group to keep it closed. Yes, yeah, so you're absolutely correct. Um, and we've seen that all of the relentless bombing uh, that the U.S. and uh, the uh, English and other allies have done uh, with respect to the Houthis in Yemen have essentially failed. They may have slowed them down a bit, but the fact is, as you said, it remains a closed sea with no access. Uh, we did see something that happened, uh, of course, this uh, past uh, weekend, uh, a week a week ago, uh, which involved Israel's retaliation on uh, Iran. And um, I think one thing we can say with a certain degree of certainty, which the media and many uh, outlets will not confirm, is that uh, Israel and Iran are both essentially afraid of each other. And I know many people will say, well, Israel is a superior military power and Iran is not. The reality is they both have the ability to do extensive damage to the other. So they're both reluctant to actually enter into any serious head-on collision. And I think that's actually a good thing, because when countries are scared of each other, it actually uh, prevents an escalation which can result in a disaster for both. Um, The Europeans, for their part, they're more concerned about what's happening in the Ukraine because obviously that uh, has a much more direct impact on them. And I think we're going to have to wait and see what uh, the election in the U.S. is going to bring in order to see the way forward. I'll give you my opinion on the Ukraine. The Europeans are, are, are 
I, I don't think um, that you have the stupidity uh, that uh, Putin is not going to start a nuclear war over the uh, Ukraine. Uh, well, the question is, if uh, Israel uh, does something with Iran, will, and I've asked this question of a lot of American uh, 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 leaders, will China come to Iran's aid? So uh, the short answer is nobody really knows, and only uh, people can only That's speculate why I said as to what would happen. Uh, but I suspect what China would do is, will it send military aid? The answer is no. Will it provide other types of aid and assistance to Iran, including diplomatic resolution to the matter? The answer is an absolute yes. We did see that the uh, Russian uh, S-400 systems, which nobody has really seemed to want to cover uh, with respect to them delivering them to Iran and Iran's use in them uh, with respect to the Israeli uh, attack on Iran, the S-400 system performed uh, marvelously. Uh, we've seen videos over Tehran of these uh, missiles being uh, fired out of Tehran or the uh, areas around Tehran. And we've seen that these missiles actually did uh, intercept. The S-400 system did intercept the Israeli missiles, which were air-launched missiles, meaning the jets that flew uh, uh, from Israel launched these, uh, their missiles uh, from very far away uh, into targets in Iran. They were intercepted, so we know that the S-400 system, although some did get through, is actually a very good system. I suspect the Russians will continue to provide support, military support, to the Iranians, but I don't think the uh, Russians themselves are eager to have another front open up uh, with respect to uh, any wars uh, that they would have to act actively participate in. So I think I don't think we're going to see anything dramatic happening anywhere in the world, at least not until we have some resolution with respect to what's well, going to happen in the U.S. and who's going to win the election there. Well, Mario Konamu, thank you so much for the update to the American people. We have um, three days to go. We'll talk right after that and uh, and see uh, where which way the world is going. And there's a lot of concern by all sides and. And thank you so much again, and we'll catch up again soon. Thank you, and enjoy your day. Eden Memorial Chapels understands Jewish funerals can take many forms. Some are orthodox, while others are more conservative or of a reform nature. There's no one better. With services close to all New York and New Jersey cemeteries, Eden Memorial Chapels offer fair and balanced pricing and can provide easy transfer of you and your loved ones to Israel. While you're grieving, they're here to take care of all the details so that you deal with less bureaucracy and have more peace of mind. Go to EdenMemorial.com. That's Eden EdenMemorial.com Hey sports fans, Danny B here. Before you submit a play today or any day, call my free play hotline. 877-828-0120 Gain access to daily free plays on a recorded message. 877-828-0120 I've been a mainstay in the sports industry for over 40 years and respected coast to coast. All plays are top rated, posted daily on a recorded message. 877-828-0120 